Welcome back to Java 101. Today we cover data types. Let's just start with an example. I'm here on Amazon.com. And let's look around at some of the data. Here's the title of this product. This is text format. So this is a type of data, text. Here's another text. It ends up being a link. Here's our ratings, 4.7. That's a decimal value. That's another type of data. Here we have 44 ratings. That's an integer value. You can't have half a rating, so a whole number. The price is also a decimal value. It is in stock. This is a Boolean, so either true or false. Another Boolean is logged on. You can see that I am not logged on, so that's either true or false. And coming down here, we can see even more text. So data types, or types of data, have representations in Java. So the Java data type of string is used for text. An example would be a name, a description, or a hyperlink. The Java data type of integer is used for a whole number. So number of reviews, or the quantity on hand. The Java data type of double represents a decimal number, so a price or a rating. And the Java data type of Boolean is used for true or false, like logged on or is the product in stock. So let's go ahead and create some data types. I deleted the previous print line statement to clean it up. And when you code, make sure it is within this bracket, your main method. So we're going to say string name is equal to double quotes. And then you can put anything you want. We're then going to say integer number of reviews is equal to 44. Notice you do not have double quotes here for an integer. It's just a raw number. And notice the color differences. A string in IntelliJ goes to green, and an integer goes to this turquoise blue. Then you have a double rating is equal to 4.7. Same thing, there's no double quotes when you do a double, and it turns turquoise. And then you have a Boolean, logged on, is equal to true. So this first word is our data type. We're telling Java what is the type of data. Next we have our variable name. You can name this whatever you want. And then we actually give it a value. Now if we go ahead and run this, you can see that nothing got printed out. This is because we didn't print anything to the console. Java went ahead and did all this, but it didn't tell us what it did. So in order to be able to see it, we have to print all of these to the console. So if you did your homework, you'll know the shortcut for a print line statement, which is SOUT tab. And then in here, I'm going to reference whatever name I gave it. So I gave this one name. I'm going to type in name. Notice once I reference it, the color changes from gray to white. If I hover over this gray, that tells me the variable is never used. So that's a hint that you did something wrong. But we're just not done yet. If I run this, I can now see whatever I put in the string. Notice it did not print the word name. It printed the value of name. Let's go ahead and print everything else. So I'm going to say SOUT tab. I'm then going to type number of review. And this really should be reviews. So I'm going to add the S here. Notice if you don't reference it correctly, it gives you this giant red error message. So make sure to add your S there at the end. Same thing. I'm going to print out the rating. And then I will print out logged on. Now when I run it, I can see each value was printed out exactly as I defined it. So a lot just happened. Let's break it down. On the far left, we have our data type. Notice that this is capitalized. I'll explain why this is later. 
Then you have your variable name. This can be anything. Your variable name can be whatever you want it to be. Just make sure it makes sense. Notice it is written in camel case. That's when the first letter is lowercase, the first letter of the next word is uppercase, etc. Java developers write in camel case by convention. This is not necessary. You don't have to write it this way. Java does not require it of you, but this is convention, so you should do it. Next, we have the assignment operator, just an equal sign. This is what actually gives your variable a value. And the value in this case was 44. And at the very end, of course, we have our semicolon. So there's multiple parts of that line of code. This part is called the declaration. This is where you declare the name of a variable, but you don't end up assigning a value. Or you could do assignment only. This is where you don't declare a variable, but you do assign the value. So in our big line of code, you have two parts. You have your declaration, which is where you say, what is the data type and what is the name of the variable? And then you have assignment. Okay, what's the value that we give to that variable? And in this case, we did declaration and assignment all in one line. But why would you declare a variable but not assign it? Well, sometimes you know that you have a variable and you know what you want to name it, but you don't know what the value is yet. Maybe you didn't go to the database and actually figure out how many likes there are yet. So later in the code, you may calculate it. Okay, let's practice separating assignment from declaration. I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything except for integer. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the assignment. And now I have just declared it. So this is declaration. Notice I get a big red squiggle. IntelliJ says the number of reviews might not have been initialized yet. So what I can do is I can say number of reviews is equal to 44. And now it's happy. So this is assignment, where we actually give it a value. If you do it all in one line, like this, this is declaration and assignment in one line. So in case you didn't notice, when you define a string, you must use double quotes. When you use an integer or a double, it's just the raw number, so no double quotes, no single quotes. And then with a Boolean, you must use either true or false. And lastly, if you don't know what your value is yet, you can set it to null. So string name is equal to null is your example. Null in Java means the absence of data or nothing. You can do this with every data type. Well, technically the wrapper class data types, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm gonna delete this comment. And instead of assigning number of reviews to 44, I'm gonna delete this and assign it to null. When I do this, I can still run it and notice it prints out null. You can do the same thing if you split assignment and declaration. And you get the same result. And of course, you can do this with every data type that we just covered. So we covered four data types one in each group, but we did not cover every single data type. So looking at the top of this chart, you can see that there's the group of text. We covered string, but there's another one, character. Character can hold a single character. I don't need to cover this because you're gonna be doing this in your exercises. There are four data types that carry integer values. We covered integer, which has a max value of about two billion. But if you don't need that much space, you could use a byte, which has a max value of 127, a short with a max value of 32,000 something, or a long with a really, really big max value. We did cover double, which can hold a decimal value, but there's also a float, which uses less memory, but holds a smaller value. 
You're going to use each one of these in the exercises, but I don't need to spend any more time explaining how they work. They work the exact same way we just covered. Now, I do not have all the data types and max values memorized. These are things you look up when needed. The most common ones that I use are string, boolean, integer, and double, which are the ones we just covered. And in the next videos, I'm going to go into extreme detail with each of these four. Okay, now it's time for you to do your homework. The link is in the description. Good luck.